Good morning, everybody. I think it's very important that solutions know that um, the ticketing booth at Darren Sami is officially open. Um, I would advise everybody to get the tickets as early as possible. I also want to announce that there will not be many complimentary tickets for Cricket World Cup. Uh, I think every MP is going through the tumultuous jazz period and uh, the, tickets, the ticket demands for St. Lucia for this World Cup is extremely high and uh, so we advise everybody to get the tickets as early as possible and uh, I think very important for me to announce is we won't be having a lot of complimentary tickets for this World Cup. I guess you can start some plans for, for the World Cup in terms of preparations. I know we're on the home stretch now. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us what, how far we, in terms of you know, just closing off preparations? Yeah, so we're doing the finishing in terms of the, the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds. Uh, if you pass through, you would see most of the, ex the internal works are done. And so the final phase of what we are going to be doing is the external works. Um, so that when people come to Darren Sami, they would see, they would enjoy a new feel of being part of this year's World Cup. Um, the Mindo Phillip Park is very close to being ready as well as a Grosley playing field. Grosley is a practice venue and so we would still have um, external works being done beyond Cricket World Cup. As you may know, um, the plans to uh, set up Grosley to be a mini stadium, uh, they were in train before we, even, before we even got any word that we would be hosting the World Cup. Something that I, as a young individual who grew up in Grosley always believed that we should have done in Grosley and so those works will continue beyond the World Cup. Um, at the Darren Sami, the technology is what we are pretty much looking forward to. The spider cam, you would see a large um, digital display um, screen, uh, a lot of exciting things for the players and for the patrons ahead of this World Cup. Beautiful. Um, I was listening to some stuff at the recently concluded regional cricket conference mm -hmm. um, and President Ufan Ali spoke about um, the return of, well, the start of a world premier cricket, I think it's, it's the replace of, of the Champions League T20. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? I welcome any additional competitions that we can host in the region. What I can say is the investment we've had in sports over the last two and a half years will have has placed St. Lucia in a position to host any local, regional, and international event. I share the sentiments of um, our President Ali simply because we've had a number of different little challenges, but we've been able to work through it with CPL especially with our franchise, uh, the Kings franchise. They've been uh, very, very, very helpful towards the development of our grassroots and our uh, high performance program for cricket in St. Lucia. But if there is a space for us to have additional cricket in the region, it would mean uh, additional opportunities for really significant economic developments in terms of hotel rooms, in terms of Airbnbs, in terms of the barber shops, the nail techs, and everybody benefiting from having an additional regional event. I think the fear is that it's going to compete with CPL. Um, I don't necessarily share that view if CPL is going to do what they need to do for every island. I'm glad that I'm part of the OECS and we have a united effort in how we're going to be dealing with CPL going forward. But I really think any competition we can have in the region will benefit St. Lucians and will have some huge economic impact. Yeah, well, I think the, the concept is, at least the concept of the original idea was to have CPL teams participate like, I guess the winner of CPL might participate in that league. Mm -hmm. um, your thoughts on that, I guess? I think it's good once we can all benefit from it. Once it does not become a situation where all the competition is happening in Guyana or Barbados or Trinidad uh, or Jamaica, uh, once every island can actually participate, uh, I think it's something that we can look forward to. Um, St. Lucia is down to host England later on this year, and so we'll be having a, a full cycle of events at the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds and I just look forward to everything that is going to happen in the not too distant future as it pertains to facility development in St. Lucia. Also we saw um, the addition of Jordan Charles to the West Indies team. Comments? I've always learned in cricket, in fact in any sport, you pick yourself. 
Johnson Charles had a brilliant century just recently. And of course, you know, at some point, I really wondered whether or not he would be on that team. But he's shown that he's in excellent form. He continues to perform very well in the shortest version of the game. And I will say one thing, and I think St. Lucians should be very proud of that. Every single time we've had Darren Sammy and Johnson Charles in the T20 setup, on two occasions we had that in our setup, on two occasions we lifted the Cricket World Cup. And so whether you're superstitious or not, whether you believe in omens, I believe that we stand a very good chance, we have a very good team, and I think Johnson Charles will make a significant contribution to us lifting that World Cup as he did on both uh, occasions in times past. Yeah, yes, sir. You saw as the co-host of the West Indies and the US, mm -hmm. the World Cup trophy was a big um, talk, and uh, which Ireland has their own unique brand of, you know, preparation. St. Lucia, we know, has been renowned for, you know, for the cultural displays. And this year, you know, again, getting a chance to host this World Cup, is there any new, um, um, you know, like, any Yeah, so hosting a, a world event requires uh, for each sector to really play their part. And this is why very early on we set up a local organizing committee. And of course, if you speak to representatives from Cricket West Indies, they will tell you St. Lucia was one of the first countries to actually set up a local organizing committee consisting of individuals from different stakeholders. So you would have had the Ministry of Tourism, you would have SLASPO, Agriculture, in fact, every sector represented on that local organizing committee for Cricket World Cup. And so the responsibility and the marketing of St. Lucia is where the Ministry of Tourism comes in. And they've had significant plans. Um, I've, I've heard of some of, of the expose that will be on display for visitors and for St. Lucians, but I don't think I should let the cat out of the bag as yet. I think we should all make every effort to go to the Darren's Army and get the tickets right now. You can get it online as well and uh, really be part of the spectacle. The eyes of the world will be on St. Lucia. We have six games here, and I think we should all make an effort to be part of it. And I believe that the Ministry of Tourism, um, with Mr. Leons in charge, will put on a very good show for the rest of the world. And, and seeing the, 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 time, the, the time factor, kind of very time appropriate, we, you know, from jazz, cricket, you know, um, CPL. and the carnival. Yes. So the stakeholders, mm -hmm. uh, is there a level of optimism? Are they, are they, is it the challenges or are they looking forward to, to, to cashing on this opportunity? I think every St. Lucian was put on notice very early this year that they should prepare for this amazing year we will be having in terms of economic activities in St. Lucia. I mean, we move in, as you said, from the Jazz Festival and we are going pretty much straight into to the Cricket World Cup. Immediately after, we have Carnival, and immediately after that, we have the CPL, the Caribbean Premier League. And then, when you think it's over, come November, we have England Tour. We have England Tour in the region. I don't know what happened with Hot 7 there, but <laughs> Hot 7 too hot there today. <laughs> but, yeah. So I think and then we get straight into December, which is the tourism season in full effect, and we come around again. So I think uh, if anybody was business savvy enough, the Prime Minister has been speaking about young people identifying talents and capabilities and turning it into entrepreneurship. I think a lot of people should have taken uh, the opportunity to really benefit from those things. A lot of persons have extended their rooms in terms of Airbnbs. Um, a lot of individuals have actually, actually approached me for added material to you know, open up their shop a little bit in the anticipation of you know, people being on island. So this is going to be an awesome year for St. Lucia in sports development. We do have a number of developments outside of CPL, including the Aquatic Center, including works on the VG playing field and the VG sports complex. And of course, the Philip Mass Lake grounds down south, Monrepo with the Wen playing field, and Labry with OG and Crossover Park. And so I'm excited about this year, and I'm excited about moving forward as a Minister of Sport well into a second term. Okay, so as the MP for the you know, like very soon is going to be launching still for jazz, mm -hmm. um, your Tomorrow night, it's Moshi Jazz. We are expecting huge amounts of people to actually descend upon Moshi. 
Um, uh, if you go through Moshi right now, there's a lot happening in terms of uh, getting the venue ready. Um, we know we've always had the issue of traffic, and so we encourage people to come early. And uh, we, the problem has been the influx of people at one particular time. Moshi Jazz will be in full effect from 6 o'clock. So we invite people to come in early, get a nice spot, and enjoy the food. Of course, Moshi would have some of the best food that you can ever get um, during jazz. And um, the vendors and everybody, they are ready. And so we're just inviting everybody to come to Moshi tomorrow night and enjoy the spectacle of uh, some of the best musical renditions you can get locally. And of course, a French band live in St. Lucia. Okay, as minister for you, um, although we have seen that the South has quite down a bit, mm -hmm. um, has there been any concern for the youth in those areas that are prone to the well, yes, a lot of conversation continues with my ministry. Um, we do have the Wiry program within our ministry where we seek to target what we call disenfranchised young individuals that may be um, in the, the fine line for violence and, and some of what we've seen. So we try to engage them and put them you know, in a grouping to have conversations and provide psychosocial support to provide you know, the level of intervention that a youth ministry can to them. Um, we are also about to launch a number of programs within our ministry to really target those individuals that we think are vulnerable. Um, it's important for us to be uh, very, very proactive. I've been saying that and not necessarily reactive to when something has already happened to really capture those persons and put them in meaningful programs. Even in terms of sport, um, our young athletes, they have the opportunity now to be part of the program with the NSDC to actually gain a skill and to do something meaningful. And I think the most important aspect of dealing with crime is really the mind, the mindset of the individual, having those programs that really target them very, very early. I know you spoke about the importance of, of keeping sports venues for sports, mm -hmm. right? But I mean, just this weekend we've seen multiple events you know, on sports. Fields. You all like to ask me those questions. Yes, yes, I do. But you all don't ask anybody else those questions. Let me just interrupt no, you very quickly, very, very soon, <laughs> very, very early. For us to have any level of cohesion in terms of facilities in this nation, those questions cannot be targeted only at sports individuals. We need to speak to, we need to speak to culture, the, the minister, the minister of finance. We need, we need to ask all these individuals because everybody knows where the Minister of Youth Development and Sport stands when it comes to sport venues. Nidi Oko, I will say it again. I believe at the end of the day, we all need to come together and have a comprehensive plan for entertainment and for sports development to have that symbiotic relationship where facilities are not just set aside and just hampered. And at the end of the day, we see damages that take months and months for us to have any intervention for. I mean, it's something that the discussion has to be beyond the Minister of Sport. Everybody knows what the Minister of Sport is going to say. I don't know any Minister of Sport in the entire world that wants to have all sorts of events on the playing field. They want sports, the priority is sports, and then other events. And so, it's, I'm going to say it again. We really need to come together. I think this is something that, that we've been having some discussion on. But I think by now we should be asking others about their part they need to play in ensuring that not just sports venues, but venues are identified and developed for entertaining our people. Let me ask then, what are your thoughts on a happy medium protecting the services? Finding ways to protect the service, um, just, you know, um, because I know that other venues in the world do house um, entertainment events and sporting events. So what are your thoughts on finding that happy medium? Yeah, that happy medium is something that is found on a number of countries where the people are disciplined. If we have a disciplined society, we can have sports and we can have entertainment. And what I mean by discipline, we have people that understand very, very clearly what to do and what not to do to damage surfaces. We know how to be responsible, but most times we don't acquiesce to exactly what's needed to protect the field. And I'll just give you a simple example. You can decide that you are going to put the same surface on and you will still have individuals that are part of the entertainment fraternity driving on that very same area to destroy it. So when you have those things occurring, 
You think as a minister, yes, we can balance it. But the reality in St. Lucia is that we are a very indisciplined society and we do not want to do the right thing to avoid the damages that we know would occur at those venues. And so for me, I've taken the approach where athletes first, sports first, and we help out, as you've seen, as much as we can to entertain our people. Okay, so plans have been announced to have an entertainment facility in Caldesac. Mm -hmm. I am in support of having uh, a national entertainment center. I've said that a couple of times that I believe we need to have a, a, a space for our people to really get some catharsis. They can really listen and enjoy each other. They can eat and drink and socialize. And I think identifying a venue is something that should have been done a long time ago. And it augurs well for us having uh, less stress on our venues. We'll still have situations where persons would be using our different venues for entertainment. But generally speaking, I think we, we've needed a national entertainment center uh, for all of St. Lucia to really enjoy. Mm -hmm. of, well, celebrating youth. I know a continuation from last year, year of the youth. Um, government recently announced a reduction in the unemployment rate. And I know your ministry is playing a critical role in launching an app that will assist in further reducing the unemployment rate. Tell us about this app and if we have a case coming soon. Skill 758 is an app that we've been speaking about for quite some time since I've been minister. It's something I believe would allow for young people to really be encouraged to get up and do something. We have a number of people sitting on blocks that have talents and capabilities and they're not certified. Or they've had the, the level of experience that allows them to get employed. And so with the Skill 758 app, it allows everybody to access the app and pretty much in your resume, your ID, and some of your capabilities so that you can get some employment. I've had conversations with the OACS to make this app available to ministers and to all other regions to really identify talent in St. Lucia and give them some work to do. And so we are having a roadshow next month to really market this 758 app and to encourage young people that may not be certified in any field to get up, get certified, because once you do that and you place that information there, the chances of you gaining employment becomes even greater. And so we've seen the progress we've made in terms of our unemployment numbers, and we expect for St. Lucia to continue to enjoy having fewer and fewer people unemployed. Yes, what can I do for you, gentlemen and ladies? Good morning. What can I do for you this morning? The who? The, sub, the 23rd Bolivarian Summit in Venezuela. No, I went to a meeting of ALBA. Al ah. Yes, not Bolivia, that's not true. I went to a meeting of ALBA. Okay, so what came out of that? Um, as you know, St. Lucia has joined ALBA. So we, we are going through the processes. And tomorrow, we, we're going to go into Parliament so St. Lucia can become a full member of ALBA. ALBA is a bank that deals with developmental assistance to, to, to islands and to, to, to countries. In fact, St. Vincent and Dominica are already members of ALBA, and I think Grenada also are members of ALBA. So St. Lucia is joining. There are some legislative things we have to do, which we're going to do in Parliament tomorrow. Okay, and would you be able to detail what those legislative processes are? No, well, there's some, we have to deal with the share structure. It's like joining any banks. We, ALBA has its, has its, its rules and regulations. We have the, the, the share structure, etc. I can assure you it's strictly economic. It's economic. It's only dealing with economic development in Russia. Nothing to worry about. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, there's been a number of issues in relation to the media the, uh, social media posts. Mm -hmm. What are those? Um, the media posts in relation to the media. And what? Um, CIP, causing a lot of harm. And what? What posts? Where they have you see, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I did not want to speak about that, right? I didn't want to speak about it. I refuse to comment about it, right? Because I think that the media should call out that level of destruction that people are bringing onto their own country. Now, you know, it's okay to talk about elections. Elections are held every five years. People are going to make up their mind every five years. But when you deliberately try to destroy your country, 
because you're not in political power. This is why I don't want to speak about it. You know, when you deliberately go out to destroy your country because you won't, you're not in political power, that's dangerous. And people should call that out. Criticism is good. Criticism is necessary. We accept criticism. We have in, in our cabinet, we have discussions when members do, don't agree with certain things and we come to compromise. But for a, a, a party that was established by Sir John Compton to deliberately get involved, to sully the name of the country and the name of the prime minister is dangerous. Yes, it's very dangerous. I didn't want to speak about it. But, but you brought it up, so I'm going to say, it's dangerous. And the, the electorate of St. Lucia should rebel against that. They should, they should rebel. St. Lucia should rebel against that, 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 that level of... I mean, you are fabricating a story about your prime minister being taken out of the country on an FBI plane, and you and you carrying that... And you, you, you say nothing about it after you said all what you, you, you said. We've continued about, about, the, about the CIP. The CIP is a means of economic empowerment for the people of St. Lucia. Not for any minister. For the people of St. Lucia. If you can get your roads built without increasing your national debt, you are against that? When you try to sully the name of your country, tying American visas with nothing to do with what's happening here. You, and just because you want political power? I mean, this is, this is, it has never been so low. And the people of St. Lucia should rebel against that level of lies and misinformation. I mean, you, and you, you, you don't say anything about it. You, you continue to, to, to the prime minister in the FBI plane and nonsense. And you want me to comment on that? But you asked me, so I had to. So do you think that the media, the media should be The media, I, don't, I never want to tell the media what to do. Never. That's not my style. That's why you never heard me treat the media how you always treated before. That's not my style. But I'm saying these things should, mainstream media should not be encouraging that level of misinformation. This is crazy. And it's not me, you know. As I've said before, gentlemen and ladies, this job is a temporary job, you know. Anyone who doesn't understand that the job of prime minister is temporary, even though you, as, even though you see as long as, 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 as Ralph Gonzalez. Anybody doesn't understand that. They, they, because what you're doing is that we have a country to run. Now, the United Lucas Party is trying to burn the house to kill a rat. That's what you're trying to do. They're burning the house to kill a rat. So everything goes. You misinform, you lie just to win power. But they, they'll have the country to run if that ever happens. And when you do not put limits, the country remains, you know. I'm not going to be all the time. Look at the number of prime ministers in Russia's past. So I'm, I'm going to pass through. I'm going to be out. And the person takes over me, we'll, we'll go out too. But the country of Senusha will remain. The country, the people, the young people will remain. So this philosophy of building the house to kill a rat, it's not good. These guys are deliberately, through them and the surrogates, lying, misinforming, because they believe it will serve them good with the electorate. But as, I can, as I'm saying to you, this job is a temporary job. But St. Lucia will remain. The young people of St. Lucia will, will have to continue to live in this country. You cannot be so selfish to believe that because you are not in political power, you must destroy the country. And that's what's happening now. And you said that's hosted. Two weeks ago, we hosted the RSS. You know, the solution, it was commendable with the, the efforts put in to hold 200, you know, uh, military personnel. At the same time, the leader of the opposition went to a global forum.
No, he represented. No, he didn't represent Zanusha. Zanusha. No. Uh. no but, okay, he represented, he's represented his political party. Okay, but what I'm saying, in all of this, Zanusha has been at the forefront, you know, of, of security, you know, of social development. Wouldn't it be um, much better at this stage for us to be looking towards, you know, more, more sustainable measures? I mean, you always call, call out to, to Hamza going to embrace you know, ideas. Wouldn't it be a, a little more you know, feasible to see that you know, we, people get to know more about the development, take, take it on the solution instead of the, the, you know, the, the you see, I made a point a while ago. It's a whole philosophy of building a house to kill a rat. I mean, I've said so, and that's what, what's happening now, right? That's the philosophy of the United Lucas Party. Burn it, take it down to gain political power. If you hear the solution that the United Lucas Party speaks about, you live here. You live here. You don't know, you don't know, you do not know that solution, do you? You live here. All of you. Every one of you in this room lives in St. Lucia, right? If you hear about, if you hear about the St. Lucia that I described overseas, this was most dangerous, overseas, you say to yourself, where are they speaking about? The United Workers Party gives the impression that St. Lucia is in mayhem, that people can walk the streets and, 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 and we, paid, we gave 2,500 free tickets to go to jazz, all sorts of foolishness, you, you understand? Just because they want to burn the house to kill the rat. Now, you live here. This country has never seen that level of economic activity in the first three months of, of, of the year for a long, long time. This country we could not recognize January. If you, but you live here. You, you, you live here. The level of economic activity in this country has never been at such a stage. We haven't got right now. There's not one room in this country for a hotel room or an Airbnb room or a, a self-driven car. People are putting their private cars, which is against the law, in into the self the self the self driven business, right? Because the level of economic activity. But the, the country that United the United Workers Party and the surrogate Spain is a country in complete chaos, mayhem. People killing each other in the streets, mayhem. That, that that's not happening. What I want to tell you is that these things don't help the country. We only, we accept criticism. We think criticism is worthwhile to keep us doing the right thing. We are rolling out a housing project. For the first time in this country, anybody who's taken a house, a house for less than $400,000 pays no stamp duty. The legislation got $400,000, you pay no stamp duty. Not a word. The preschool, we had a pledge to improve... Um, kindergarten education, preschool education. The government is giving a stipend to every preschool, every non-government non -government preschool run by the private sector, a stipend of $2,500 for them to help to bring the preschool in a particular standard. Pensioners in this country, which you should be protecting, there are people in this country who used to get less than $300 a month pension. You want to believe somebody having to live on less than $300 a month? That was going for years. This government has changed it for the NIC pensioners to $500. An increase from $300 to $500. And we're looking forward, to, and it's not something we can, we, that NIC can do. They have to look at the, the actual reports. We're looking to see if we can increase it further this year. 2,400 people are going to benefit from that. 2,400 people are going to benefit from that. And that, that's a country in mayhem? That's a country where nothing works? 2,400 people are going to get an increase in their pensions from 300, that's nothing? Government pensioners. Some government pensioners used to get $300 a month, $400 a month. No government pensioner 
is going to get less than $725 a month. That's a country in mayhem. That's a country where nothing works. That's a country that the United Coast Party want to paint in, in, in St. Lucia. And the government must be defenseless. If you defend yourself, they say you, you, you're not sticking to, to your... To your you, so we mustn't defend ourselves. We must re just remain there as sitting ducks for everybody, for the United Coast Party, to just throw lies and misinformation on, on us. That's a country in mayhem. That's a country that's in mayhem. That's a country that, that is spending over $40 million to build police headquarters in, 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 in the north of the country for the, for the police. Never before. The United Workers Party spent five years trying to get the police in the north of the country in proper facilities. We are building it. That's a country that next week, on early next week, next month, we're going to be recruiting 17 new policemen for training. That's a country in Mayhem. That's a country where we're going to be given, by the end of May this year, this month, we're in May, right? We're going to be giving the police motorcycles, ATVs, and motorcycles and um, water skis for the, uh, uh, for the operations on, on, on the water at the end of this month. That's a country in Mayhem. Is that a country that they, they're speaking about? That's a country where the unemployment rate, I heard, I mean, the most ridiculous things. I heard the United States Party say in the Senate that the unemployment figures are wrong. But the same document says that the growth figures are preliminary. The same document. But they've chosen that the unemployment figures are preliminary, but not the growth figures. That's a country in Maine. Because it is just deliberate, deliberate. I'll hold my words. <laughs> I mean, I have, a right, I have a right to get annoyed. I'm human. I was reading something. On the, I, I, I'll send for you. I'll give it to my press secretary to send for you. About the toxic nature of our politics. I'll cause my press secretary to send for you. You understand? Because you almost have to lose your temper. Because when, when you sit, you see, these guys don't believe you are family. Listen to me. The leader of the opposition has been out for three weeks. We've not commented. We haven't said a word. Even as us, you know what, what would be happening? But we've passed that stage. We are a party of dignity. That's what the Labour Party is. It's a party of dignity. If the Prime Minister was out of this country for three weeks, or whatever time he's been out. You know what to be said? We've said nothing. We've respected the leader of the opposition's privacy. We've respected his family. That's what we're about. None, not one. And Lisa is here, and Melissa is here. We've not commented once on his absence, not once. That's the, that's the kind of party that I run. A party of dignity, a party of respect. If it was on the other foot, they attack my daughter. She hasn't got a right to have a party where she's supposed to be living. And they play as if they're not involved in that. It's a surrogate to do it. Surrogates that are well in, well, right now they are posting, right now they are posting um, WhatsApp clips of things that happened in the last election. I know who's doing it. We know who's doing it. These guys are even on the verge of wanting to create issues in the police force. We've spoken about leaving, leaving the police force out of things. They're right in there just because they want to burn the house to kill a rat. But we're not going to comment on that. We're going to remain, we're going to remain focused. The idea is to take us off focus. And I've told my staff, we're going to stay focused. Focused in moving the country. Focus in our road infrastructure uh, 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 development. Focus in our housing development. That's what we focus on. Yes, Prime Minister. St. Lucia's um, CIP program has been reached.
considered one of the best in the world for its due diligence processes. However, there have been efforts to paint our CIP in a bad light, saying that we're selling our country. Can you tell the general public what the revenue from CIP will be used to fund? How will it aid in our solutions sustainable development? The only people that have been painting our CIP in a bad light is the opposition. You must get it right. You must get it right. The only people who are painting our CIP in a bad light is the opposition. The United Workers Party through its leader and its surrogates. They are the only people. St. Lucia's, St. Lucia's position on the CIP was clear. Very clear. Very clear. St. Lucia, first of all, let me reiterate on what we seem to forget. The CIP rules were changed by the United Workers Party. They were the one who changed it, not us. It was the leader of the opposition who reduced the CIP, the CIP from 200 or whatever it was, 200. It was done by him. And the prime minister told me to tell him to say in public, I won't mention his name, the prime minister said me I could, I could say it in public. The discussion that happened when they were changing it, what the leader of the opposition said. The prime minister told me I could say it in public, but I'm not going there. I'm not telling you either. A, 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 a prime minister told me that I can quote him and say that he said what the leader of the opposition said when they were changing the laws. But I'm not going to do it. He's the one who changed it. He's the one. And Ms. Motu, you must listen to that. He's the one who changed You never asked him why. He's the one who changed Not me. He's the one who changed it. And now the surrogates asking him why did he change it. He changed it because he said the market conditions are right. Now, listen to me. You've changed it. You've brought it down in line with the rest of, of, of the market. We are saying that we have some investments we've put in place to build roads, to build houses. Take a go to Dominica and you see what happens. Dominica built about 5,000 houses. St. Kitts pays its civil servants 13 months salary for a year. Yes, a bonus. St. Kitts just gave every child born 1,500 as an independence gift. St. Kitts, the, if you look at good St. Kitts' development, a lot of it because of CIP. St. Lucia has never got these benefits. That is a fact. When the leader of the opposition was prime minister, the CIP benefits he had was a range product project, and you paid $12 million for it. You seem to forget, forget that. We had to pay $12 million to range for the leader of the opposition changing, not keeping up to the promises he had of range. These are facts. So here's what we did. We said that we will set up these contracts to do our infrastructure and to do some housing or housing project first. As soon as these contracts come to bear, we'll sign an agreement. Now, I'm not going into that agreement yet, but I'm going to read it, you understand? But be, the, the opposition is so gang-ho on creating confusion and bringing this country down. They're not even telling you what's in the agreement. You understand? All we said is, we're not signing because we want to f clear these contracts first. That's all we're saying. We've made the point that we agree with everything there. But we must see about the national interests of St. Lucia. There are countries in the region who are in court now because of changing agreements. We don't put a country through that. So all we're saying is allow us to clear the contract that we have now, and we're going to sign. That's all we're saying. Our due diligence, we are the only country, or one of the few countries right now, who have a postal interview. All the due diligence processes of St. Lucia are tops. St. Lucia has no issue with, with due diligence. St. Lucia's due diligence happens at several levels, including the banks. 
No money goes to the CIP account unless it's verified by the bank. That's the level of, of due diligence we have. But in terms of signing an agreement on pricing, we said we have some contracts out, allow us to complete. That's all we said. But when you try to, 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 when you try to bring a country into disrepute for that, something is wrong with you. How many times? How many times did I say that? I also heard that somebody said that we should change the name from St. Lucia C and e Slasba, St. Lucia and Sipas for it because we, we, have, we have no pots again. Let me say it again. Can I say it again? Please? Okay. Slasba continues to deal with all the cargo facilities on the ports. What has been handed over to GPH, like it has happened in Antigua, like it happened in, 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 in Bahamas, is the cruise part of the operations. The cruise. On a 30-year concession, where GPH collects the, pot, the, the dues, they share it with the government, but the, environment, the environmental levy remains, but always in exchange for paying part of the debt of SLASPA, all the cruise debts that were incurred by SLASPA are being paid by GPH. All the cruise debts that were, cru that were accrued by SLASPA are being paid by GPH. So in terms of SLASPA has no liabilities as far as cruise tourism is concerned. No liabilities. In exchange, the ports are going to be upgraded. The Venice Arcade is going to be upgraded. Only the cruise operations. SLASPA no paka van, no poko van pot la. Tout slas po cafe, slas pon pon cruise la. Me slas po cruise la, no buy cruise la pour GPH, pour 20 l'année, et apwe, siyan se dise kaini anko. Me pou fe sa, yo paye tout debt slas po teni, le kapale about cruise. Tout se debt slas ja paye. So, that's a pan pièce debt pour cruise. Ek GPH kay ou anje vendors a ked la. GPH kay fe on Broadway la. GPH kay fe bay soufye. Ek GPH kay fe bay gay banan. Me tout debt la spell teni pour cruise GPH point. Me la spell still katavay e kago. Cargo, c'est bah qui a vini, qui a vini c'est là, là des tiers barrels bah comme ça, et et port là. Nous pas vendre port c'est ici. Available to the public. Um, what are your thoughts on that? The, this, you know, again, it's a misinformation that is, that, 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 that is chronic. There is a statutory, in, a statutory instrument that's a public document. It's an SI. SI is a public document. So what, what, what's those details? The SI is a public document. There's an SI is going to be published on the, on the, on the concessions again that, that were given to the, to, 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 to the GPH. Where is the SI they had for? In fact, let's leave that alone. <coughs> there is an SI that is going to be print. I think it's, it must be probably out already. Is that not a secret? What's the name? What's the name of the SI? It's going. I think it's. 
slash or something. It's an essay. It's that instrument, my brother. It's an essay. It's going to publish in the Gazette. I mean, this level of misinformation is frightening. It's going to publish in the Gazette. And it could also call parliament. I'm so, I don't understand. <laughs> See, I, I, don't, I really don't understand you. Yes. You see, the, the, the St. Jude Hospital scenario, again, we've made it clear, very clear, what this government is going to spend on St. Jude going forward. We are completing four buildings, which is four buildings will, will complete, are going to be completed, the contractor says, by the end of June. The remainder of the buildings have gone out to tender. We, are, we can't give a price unless you get a tender. I mean, how can you give a price unless, unless you get a tender? What, 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 what foolishness is that? It's out on tender. It's a public tender. They said there was no tender. I showed a tender in the, in the, parliament, on, in the parliament on Tuesday. Because they said that there was no tender. It was a public international tender. When the tender is complete, when the tender process is complete, we'll get the cost. So if, if the leader of the opposition has information on the tendering process, he must tell us that means the tendering process is, is no longer secret. I must examine the horns. It's a straight, you know, I did something. These things are so straightforward that it's almost frightening, you know. It, it, that's, that's, and that's what makes it, makes it dangerous. It's a public tender. We said that four billions, we, we said the reason why it was given by direct award, but that's the rest of the public tender. So you will know the, when the public tender comes out how much the hospital costs. Very simple. Because it's public. It's not secret. It's not like, what, what, what do you call it? Gerald the Caribbean, what do you call it? Pull the Caribbean. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Prime Minister, we, during your policy address, you spoke about the investments going into the police and, and national security concern. I think a lot of people in the public are asking about the government's technological investment in the police, so apart from physical resources like the vehicles and so on. As I said, I'm glad, as, I said, as I said the other day, you cannot go in public of all national security arrangements because the criminals are steps. They have, the, they have access to all the information you have. We can't go in public and see what the police has. Is that that's why I was abhorred to find out somebody saying how many bulletproof vests the police have. I mean, this, is, I mean, this thing is... Solutions get out of hand, you know. I mean, this is crazy. you say saying to the public that the many police out there, they have no, they have no, they have no bulletproof vests. How can you, how can I come as me now and tell you what, what the police are doing in terms of, I can tell you what, what you can see, but I can't tell you what you can't see, and I will not tell you what you can't see. When I tell you what, you what you cannot see, I will be absconding on my responsibility to protect the lives of the men and women who serve us in the police, in the enforcement agencies. And I will not abscond on that responsibility. So I cannot tell you what the police have. What I can tell you, I can tell you physically what you see. There's a lot that you're not seeing. Okay, so moving to <coughs> the, um, the Republic Bank investment and what we did. Yes. Could you just provide some, some details about what that would entail? First of all, it's a private investment. Eh? The government is just working with the private investment. First of all, it's going to house the headquarters of the bank. This is the first building, the bank's headquarters. And again, is that a country in Mayhem? Well, a regional bank, which is now going, going global, has chosen St. Lucia for its headquarters. <laughs> that's a bank that's going global. 
right? It's choosing, it's choosing St. Lucia as its headquarters. Having that development in St. Lucia. That's a country in name. So we're going to, and then there's going to be a series of other buildings, hotels, a shopping mall, but they're starting with the bank headquarters. That's what I mean. It's a massive investment. But it's going over, over six years or so. But the, the first stage is the bank. And what is the government like, providing? Just the incentives, bank? like anybody else. The government has no investment. The government is not putting any direct money. You give it incentives. Anybody else. The United Workers Party are criticizing the government for the use of the health and security levy. They're claiming that it is not contributing to the betterment of our health or security. What are your thoughts on this? I guess in, in my job, pictures is with you. The health and security levy last year brought $15 million. $15 million from July to December was the health and security. And for the rest, it's got $18 million. The health, the charges on this country for health and security are nearly $200 million. That's what I have to tell you. You listen to you heard what I said? Good. So, 200, over $200 million in terms of government experience on health and security, but the health and security levy has only brought $18 million. So that's my answer. Um, I think it's one last thing from me. Uh, your favorite no, you have me for the whole day. <laughs> I'm not going to any plane in Washington. <laughs> my next travel is on the 18th of May. That's my, that's my next travel. I'm not going anywhere before that. Um, so 16? Spoken, 16 for me. Yeah. You've spoken passionately about climate change and its, its impacts on Sydney. Uh, and that's what I want to talk to the opposition about. <laughs> that's what I want them to talk about. That's what I want us, us, let's discuss these things. I'm ready for that. Because we, none of us can stop that, you know. You know you can get up. You know you can get up one day and find this whole country is wiped off. I don't think we speak about how serious that, but I'm sorry for the, for, 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 sorry. So, <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Okay, so we're, we're facing a, a drought and then we have an impending above average hurricane season. Uh, right now, we're seeing a lot of developments in the region. For example, Dominica building climate resilient houses, St. Jude, yeah, and the police station in Beaufort are said to be climate resilient as well in terms of hurricanes. Moving forward, what, what is the government doing? its plans to ensure that future infrastructure and let's say the production of water and, and energy and these things are climate resilient and, and, and this kind of thing. Yeah. You may recall a bridge called the Bois de Orange Bridge? Yes. Remember that story? Yes. Remember that story? When that means of infrastructure, remember that story? If I was born. <laughs> no, you were born. <laughs> you might, probably might not have been a reporter, but you were born. And that's a problem if, 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 that's a problem, you know, St. Lucia's history. And I've made that point so many times before. For, for, for you, for you young, bright people, St. Lucia's history, you only heard from one side. And I'm making that point a long time ago. I don't know how we can cause young people in St. Lucia to learn the history of this country. It's a rich history. We don't learn. And that's bad. Because we only heard, we only heard on one side. The Balloons Bridge. The Balwash Bridge was one of the first climate res resistant structures built in St. Lucia. <clears throat> right? Because when I was means of infrastructure and the government I was a part of, we had the foresight as well what would happen as far as climate change and that's concerned. So we built the Balwash Bridge as the as a bridge that would be able to withstand, I think it's one in a thousand years. I'm not, I'm not sure of the details. We built it. So it cost us some more money. The United Workers Party went to go into power. They had all kinds of investigations. You, you, you remember that? You don't remember that one? The falling bridge. Right. Right. You remember. I know you remember. <clears throat> we built it, put in four lanes in there for the future expansion of the highway. It's, the, it's a climate resistant structure. We explain that. The Army Corps of Engineers are the ones who did the design, right? We explained that. They said it was corruption. 
and we build a bridge that was $3 million, it cost us $10 million. There was a whole you and cry on that, on, on, on that bridge. What I'm saying to you is that in terms of, in terms of climate, climate change, you have to mitigate and you have to adapt. Okay? Adapt is to what you have to make it resilient and to mitigate to stop it from happening. We were there already. We were mitigating already. That means the infrastructure in that bridge. We were mitigating already. That's why it costs so much. So hopefully, if there's a, a, a storm, it will not be damaged. We want to do that for all buildings now and going forward. But it's expensive. So the costs will, will, will be higher. But these are the discussions we must have as a country. That's what we must have as a country. That's what I'm willing to speak to the opposition about, or to anybody. Not the negativity and the, the because don't matter. All right, let's suppose you are prime minister of a country. You've you've gotten your whole. You become prime minister, right? What you what you think is yours, and there's a hurricane. All wipes out. Everything's gone. You know, everything is gone. It has happened before. It happened in Dominica. Everything is gone. You have nothing to you have nothing to talk about, you know. You have nobody to attack. Because everything is gone. Everything is very possible. All the plans I'm speaking to uh, about you to you now that I'm very excited about is very possible. By the end of the year, none happens because the country gets wiped out by a hurricane. It's very possible. I pray it doesn't happen. But that's a possibility. And that's where we have to be as a country. We have to discuss these things. That's what I want to speak to, to, to the opposition about. What we do in terms of what happens in Dominica? What do we do? How do we do run this country in case of that emergency? Because we, we're no longer speaking about, about, about liquor rainfall. You're talking about the country being wiped out. That's what I want to speak about. And that's the reality of the situation. We can end up having no country to run. So what we're fighting for will, will be nothing. Because a hurricane might wipe it off. And that's why we have to mitigate and we have to adapt. And this is, these are the things that we have to talk about in this country. These are the things we must demand our politicians to speak about. What measures are you taking in this regard? What happens to your food security? If there's a, what happens to your food security? What happens to the, do you have enough food to sustain your, your country? Do you have enough medicines? What happens if we get another pandemic? Which again is possible. What do we do? So what you're fighting for, you'll have nothing. 